My name is Edward Payson, and this is where I grew up, a small town of Derry, New Hampshire. This is where we met John, and our lives were changed forever. You know, the thing is, I don't really remember how I met John a whole lot, but I just remember he, he was over Garrett's house a lot. John, show him how beatboxing really is, if you know what I'm doing. Come on, man. <laughs> show him how it's really done. Oh, I don't even know how. how. <laughs> no. They're a tight group. Uh, they're a tight group. They get along well. Um, I mean, whether it's playing video games, watching movies. <laughs> I want to kill this kid. You know, just the typical guy stuff. You know, it was like a group that had found each other who probably never had real friendships before this. And so it was beautiful to see for me. The best thing about John was the fact that he was just so happy all the time, funnel of it. Yeah, I found out that my granddaughter was <laughs> Snoopy. <laughs> <laughs> He had a great sense of humor. He had lots of friends. Uh, he was mischievous. I can't. <laughs> ah! He was brave, very, very brave. John was a really, really good kid. He was a really unique kid. He was always, always happy. He was always himself, no matter who he was around. Some of the specific memories I had was of John being in the hospital and visiting him there and his concern was never for himself but always he met this girl or he met this gentleman and how they were suffering. It was never about John. Well he was just very determined to find a cure and so he pushed himself in every which way. The problem was um, you know it, it, the word wasn't out there. Not too many people know about sickle cell. I've lived with it my whole life, and um, this money is to help um, find a cure for it and help people live better lives. You can make a donation. If you can make a donation, that will help a lot. Thanks. We hear about research, but we have not heard anyone who have come across a, um, a cure or something close to it to help people with sickle cell. So Jonathan, was that was his goal in life, to really, because he was suffering and he didn't want others to suffer the same way. He would tell me, you know, I'm having a lot of pain. It would be either in the chest or different body parts. Um, if we couldn't get that under control with medication, he wound up in the hospital quite often. Well, the way I deal with it, since I already knew that he was, uh, he had a lot of disorders and it was already sick and everything, I sort of knew sooner or later that they would have to come and you just prep yourself emotionally on when that day would come, which technically no one can actually accomplish because your body can't just assume that day and then already be ready for it. He um, he just wanted to get rid of it basically and we know he's in a better place now and the, the, uh, the disorder he has is gone now. He always made the best of his situation regardless if he was in pain or not and um, he was always happy uh, as long as he was around us. It just feels like one of those days, you know, everything was going right, and then you get that text message from your friends, a big group message saying, someone passed away, and you are just, you know, it's the first friend that you lost, you know, and it's like, how do you deal with that? When I heard that he died, I was devastated. I, like, sometimes, like that you can't believe Facebook and like when you believe Facebook it just like hits you. He kept saying you know to us he he was gonna get better and everything. I just took it so hard.
on us. Well, thank you for being there for me. And I'm glad you're not hurting anymore. You're in a better place. I got a word from brother and your mom say that to us to don't be lazy, which is true. And you gotta make your dreams come true. John on the bus and I saved his life by telling the bus driver where to go because he was having a really bad seizure. I told him told him to go to the fire station that was in Derry, like close to Pinkerton. And that we did that, so I basically saved John's life. After that when we used to go to Special Olympics and whatnot, we would just have fun. He would hit me with like a water bottle and whatnot and when we came to Living Innovations, it's just like our friendship just connected again. My name is Cindy Burke. I'm the program manager um, at Living Innovations and we support people of all ages and abilities to have a good life at home and in the community. There's a wide range of people. Everybody is different. Um, we may support someone to find and maintain employment. Uh, we may support someone to live independently in their own apartment. Uh, we may find them a family, uh, a foster family to live with if they are unable or do not wish to live independently. We will support them in hobbies, interests, um, volunteer work, um, making friends building relationships, community networking. John actually came to us through his mother. And um, he was overprotected, wanted more independence than he actually had, which I afforded him everything legally possible to be independent. My boss, Cindy, approached me and said that there was a medically fragile Client, new client that needed a home provider and since I was an RN she would love for him to live with me and when I asked what he had he said she said that he had sickle cell anemia um, and she asked if I knew what that was and I said yeah I had a friend over 20 years ago who passed away from sickle cell was this boy's name Jonathan by any chance and she said yeah and I said I worked with his father and his father was the one that passed away um, and he was, he was a very good friend of mine. So there was no question in my mind when I said yes, I would love to have him live with us. He moved from a home that had little kids that he played with and um, we call them home care providers um, who treated him basically like their child. So um, moving in with Linda and Garrett, he was treated like an adult. Um, he was loved very much for who he was. John came to live with us in, back in the summer of 2012, and immediately me and him became friends. He was already cracking jokes, he, like 20 minutes after I met him. Handicapped jokes after handicapped jokes. It was just so funny to me. They called their group Garrett's Posse. Um, they were just bonded immediately. They were all best friends, and it went from there. When John moved in with me, my son Ted was home from California and he is a filmmaker who does horror movies and, and that type of thing in, in California. And John and Ted bonded immediately and John looked up to him like a big brother. Um, 
he looked up to him and wanted to be like him. And Jonathan was definitely into horror and the whole horror genre. So was Garrett and his friends. Um, and so that was something that sparked his interest. John had just moved in with my mom and uh, he really had bonded with Garrett and became really good friends with Garrett. And I guess when I got there, John didn't really know much about filmmaking. He would ask me so many questions like, how, how is that done? How do you do that? How do you do this? I wouldn't say that John was a great writer per se. I mean, he had a lot of difficulty in, in writing in general, but he did have a big brother um, who worked with him, a big brother mentor type person who worked with him at night um, and would take him out here and there. And this boy helped him um, get the software that he needed to start a script. And Jonathan came up with this idea all by himself and he started writing the script. And it was slow, slow going because Jonathan had his disabilities. but. He was bound and determined to finish the script. I would constantly hear him when he would come home from the hospital say, I got to get back with Wesley. I got to finish the script. And that was one of his goals. And he spent so much time in the hospital, five, six, seven weeks at a time. And for him to be able to come back and get right into the writing of the script again was just amazing. I remember um, John coming to me and saying he wanted to make a uh... YouTube video and everything, and I told him I would be down for it. And it was a couple months later, he, he passed on. And, you know, at that point, I just didn't think he'd get his film made and everything until Garrett's brother Ted called us up one day and told us, you know, he, he's going to get his hand on this script. Six months ago, my mom came to me and told me that my brother's best friend, John, who died of sickle cell anemia, was writing a script before he died for a short film that he then intended to make with his friends. My mom called me and she said, he has this script, he really wanted to make it, it would be a great honor, and your brother and his friends want to make this film, can you help them? We're basically here to ensure that not only their film gets made, but we can tell the story and the trials and tribulations of how they made the film. We are making this film in honor of our friend John. He was working on this film before he died. And I only saw a little bit of the script, but it was awesome to be filming, casting, and producing this movie. He would be so happy that we're doing this. And like, if he was still alive, he would want to be directing, because it's his movie. I would say this should be like a new goal for me, like just practice acting and directing, just to get used to it. If, if we were to do another movie. To be honest with you, I had no experience, but this is the first, so uh, somehow I had to learn. It is kind of scary a little bit, but I think once we start doing the movie and directing and the cast and stuff, we'll get used to it. I think he would be very pleased, very happy. He loved his friends because they could relate to him. They all had some type of disability. So he felt he fit into that type of world versus the quote unquote normal type of world. So I think he'd be really ecstatic to know that his friends were doing this. Unfortunately, this was the last time we got to speak to John's mom. John's death was still an open wound. So she decided to move with family down south. I, I have um, had a really bad learning difficulty and still do have that learning difficulty. I go to college currently and I have accommodations like I had back in high school and middle school and you know I need extended times on tests, such like that, you know, I space out. So that's why I'll be like, what? Or just like, can you repeat that again, etc. like that. And, um, you know, people always thought, you know, it was because I was quiet and everything. I tell them that I'm not so much of a quiet person, per se. I just, you know, as soon as I find the right word, I'll just be like, just will not shut up. <laughs> Favorite horror film, I would have to say, is the original Nightmare on Elm Street from 84, 85. I just really like it because it still can get under your skin and creep you out. My disability is uh, spinal bifida. Uh, it affects me every day. The everyday struggles with spinal bifida was, was like 
My mom has to help me with everything, including bathing, cooking my meals. I can't walk, I'm paralyzed from the knees down. Completely paralyzed from the knees down. Can't move at all. I have very little mobility with the rest of my legs eat too. Spina bifida is like a undeveloped spine. Like just the cord is hanging. And I guess it was hanging out of me when I was born. My brother's everyday life is he just has to do a lot of indoor things where he's just confined to his room, either playing PlayStation or uh, watching TV. This gets him out of the house and he's doing something that he'll remember for the rest of his life. My favorite movie was always uh, King Kong, the original 1933 version, because it was always one of the movies that fascinated me as a child. The one movie that I could always watch over and over and over and not never get sick of it. And the uh, just the way it was made was amazing to me. My disability is um, that I can I can't read. Like I can only learn slower than others. And I have a hard time memorizing something like stuff. So and then like I, that's basically it. As you can see, like, I am I'm big into horror movies. I collect skulls <laughs> and animal skulls. And I decorated this myself. It was cracked a little bit, but I fixed it up. I uh, spray painted it with black, sparkling green. I've just been watching horror movies since I was like 12. And so, um, to my knowledge, I like to, like, build up and start making our, my own horror movies. The hardest thing was like going over the script, practicing reading it and stuff. Rose Thorn basically is about a, a slasher type of film where Rose is this very older woman and she um, goes to babysit these kids and they don't know that, you know, their babysitter is a serial killer. and. You know, she, she just has this passion of killing and all that, and, um, you know, I think it's going to really bring back the, the slasher genre, you know. So, Maria Olsen um, was an actor in um, all horror movies like Lord of Salem, Spit on Your Grave 2, Criminal Activity 3, and Percy Jackson, so we contacted her on Facebook and we asked her if she would like to help us out acting in our movie, and she said sure. She's acting as uh, as Rose, the main character, the main killer. I thought this was an absolutely amazing idea, and I agreed to be part of the project, specifically looking at crowdfunding, um, assisting with that. Um, assisting generally where I could with production and when they offered it to me also to play the part of Rose in the short film itself which is called Rose Thorn. Um, it's just such a an inspirational project and it not only helps keep John's memory alive and shows us what his talents were but it also empowers Garrett Payson, um, Brandon Joyle, and Nick Saparito, the three producers and directors of Rose Thorn. We have another actor uh, named Stephen Wu who was in another one of my brother's films, um, Cohasset Snuff Film. It was very convenient. I live in Boston. Um, we filmed, f filming a lot of this movie up in New Hampshire and in the New England area. Um, so I was available. I heard about our friend John and what they were doing. There's no way I could say no to that. Um, it's a great story, and uh, it's wonderful how the three of them are really banding together to, you know, make their friend's dream come true. My future sister-in-law, Jamie Baker, she'll be playing a police officer. Well, I play Amanda Bennett, and I'm a detective in the short film, and basically me and my partner are trying to track down this killer. Growing up, not a lot of people know this, I had a learning disability and a speech impediment. And I was actually in special classes and I had to have a speech coach. And it took me a lot of years to get over that disability. So I feel like I kind of can connect to a lot of them because I know what it's like to overcome things that seem impossible, but once you do it, you 
It's like becoming a new person, like being born a new person. Me and Brandon will be casting this movie because Nick unfortunately can't be here due to work issues. Uh, there are 250 people. Hopefully there's a lot of people showing up. I want to cast pretty girls and because John would love that. What make girls pretty is their blonde hair and high heels and lipstick. I'm hoping like at least 25 will show up. Like to try. I'd say out. 50 or more. Yeah. Can I saw somewhere? Hopefully, some people show up. Yesterday, we had our casting call, and only one person ended up auditioning. There's blood on the floor. Where do you think it came from? Upstairs. Let's go check it out. You, canvas the neighbors. I'm gonna solve a murder. That was a very good yeah. like, transition from character to character. Yeah, you'd be perfect for the father. Yeah, father or the husband in the honeymoon part. When I first arrived, Nick Brandon and Garrett were, yes, very interested in the filmmaking process, but they were silent observers. They were sitting and watching us doing our thing for uh, the documentary film. And when it came time to speak about Rose Thorne, they pretty much just wanted or seemed to want to go along with what we said about it. But then we made very clear to them that it was their film. They had to step up. They had to make the decisions, both creative and administrative. And they had to make it come together. I think the most concrete um, example that I can sh tell you of is... The very first time we said, okay guys, you're now having a production meeting for Rose Thorne, what are you going to talk about? Do you want to make a list? And they just looked at each other and were like, we don't have pens or papers or anything like that. Uh, Two young lovers, Alyssa and Mike, settled in the honeymoon suite while Kevin, they started a fire. What did I do to deserve to be with such an amazing woman? You're an amazing man, Michael St. James. <laughs> it's so weird to say my husband. Why? Why is that? Weird, weird good, or weird bad? Obviously good, weird dummy. Hey, <laughs> hey. <laughs> Just read it. <laughs> they kiss, Alyssa takes off her shirt and reveals a bra. Ooh la la. Senorita. <laughs> <laughs> the newlywed is going to be played by Krista Cody. Krista is a DSP for the company Living Innovations that helps people with disabilities and whatnot find jobs, become social in the community. Krista, you're going to be playing Alyssa? Yep, and um, you uh, wouldn't. Oh, let me say this. Wait, am I gonna be playing Alyssa? Or are you asking me if I will play Alyssa? No, you're gonna be playing Alyssa. Oh, okay. And. Just. No, come on. You're the one who asked her. Part of this you're too. Come the on. one who Dude, asked The director her. would be the one calling her. You got, you got this. I can't do it. Yes, you can. What about you, Garrett? You gonna man up? Come on, Garrett. Man up. I can't on, do it. Do it. You can do it. <laughs> Shut up. You're Ted, the one seriously? who started it. Let's put your so You're the one that can hold it. Yeah, but what? Oh, yeah, just sit there. Listen yeah, to this. Yeah, one of y'all, one of y'all got just to talk to her about her happy. role. Nick, just fucking do it. Nick, just what? do you it. You can do it. You're the one that knows. Yeah, more than that. What did you even say to her? I said she's gonna be playing the part. 
the character Alyssa. As Brandon was saying, this is Nick, the other director. Hey, Nick. Hello. So as Brandon was saying, you're going to be playing Alyssa. She's in a cabin with her newlywed and and all that. And um, I'm I'm what? You're you're going to be playing a newlywed and everything okay. to this guy. Um, you know, all you all you really have to do is bring some PJs. You have to re reveal your bra to this guy. That's a what? You have to reveal you have to reveal a bra to this guy. You have to take off your shirt. I have to wear my bra. That's it. No, you take off your shirt and everything. I take off my shirt and I'm wearing my bra. Yes. Oh boy. Can you guys wear blindfolds? We'll see. We could probably cut <laughs> cut really fast. <laughs> yeah. And you have any PJs you don't really care about? Um, I'm sure I could find something. Okay, that would be awesome. Why? What's happening to my PJs? They're gonna get a little messy. <laughs> oh my god! John Turcott uh, came to us and helped us with our campaign video for our documentary about John. Sean will be playing the role of uh, Detective Grimes. He's played cops in the past, and uh, he did very well with it. Is this John? This is John. Uh, you'll be playing the role of Grimes, uh, the uh, detective in the in uh, the scene. Okay. I, I can do that. Okay, sweet. Thank right, you. Thank you so much. Thanks, man. So, so Jeremy, we know he's shooting tomorrow. No. So what if he's not available? Definitely have to get a hold of Jeremy and let him know what his yeah. role is and that the shoot is tomorrow. Well, that's the thing. Like, like I didn't know all this beforehand because... Nobody I'll... did. That's the whole point of this meeting. Is this Jeremy? Yep. Hey, um, you're going to be playing the character Mike. Okay. And um, I'm going to send you the script. And, um, uh, if you get phone there. We're going to send you the script, then, um, you can do your lines, then, uh, we'll be, uh, needing you tomorrow. Yeah. I was a little bit nervous for working with big professional actors. You're the guy that gets, uh, killed in the, uh, first scene in the log cabin? Yep. While making out with a woman? You get to see a woman's bra. Taking off a shirt. What? What? I think he said take off her pants too. I wanted to know if he could take <laughs> off her panties too. Was a porno? <laughs> what the heck, Jeremy? No, dude. No, dude. Alright, so, welcome back, the camera. You haven't seen this no, thing in a while. That's like the most camera. What kind of camera, you ask? It's a Sony! It has a built in USB, 60 extra zoom. Difficulties we might face are, like, say, the weather. Like, if it's raining, stuff like that. Um, producing, I, uh, filming might be an issue too. But I really don't think we're gonna have that many problems. Hey, sunshine, seen the rain now. Never thought I'd see this guy the same But we, we woke up and saw that sun I knew a new day has begun I've gone through my trials in tribulation Don't watch the time, don't waste your time And I won't mind Mind over matter If you don't mind, it don't matter, don't 
Don't watch the time, it's not on your wrist, it's on your mind over matter. But if you don't mind, it don't matter, don't. Don't watch the time, it's not on your wrist, it's on your. I felt like I was in Hollywood land, and you know, this was, this wasn't. New Hampshire, this was actually like um, a spot for Hollywood and all that, and um, I just, um, it was just great, you know, just seeing everyone just really astounded and happy. Director, salute! Oh, Who's ready? Who is yeah. ready to direct a film? We arrived at our location that was in the middle of nowhere. I was scared out of my mind because it's like the most sketchy area you will ever go to. We are filming the two detectives, and they're going to be coming out and talking. They're going to say some words. It's going to be awesome. And uh, we'll see how it goes. I think it's going to go really well. First time to be shooting ever for Nick, Brandon, and Garrett. Um, they shot outside in the middle of not a rainstorm, but definitely a fall of rain. Conditions were not wonderful. Um, even if you're an experienced filmmaker, you don't want to shoot in conditions like that. This is no amateur. They've been killing for a long time. Is that too much, or is that...? That's uh, actually good. That's, That's good. good. All right, so now, now try it in the, um, the other voice. All right. I expected it to be a little crazy because it was their first time making a film. And I know that some of them have disabilities, which makes it hard for them to get around. But I was actually pleasantly surprised because I thought they did a really great job, even for their first time. Like, the disabilities didn't even matter. All right, this voice hurts my throat, so I can't do it too much. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fucking disgusting. Look around the perimeter again. There's something we missed. We're on it, sir. This is no amateur. They've been killing for a long time. Being able to participate and make this film for their friend John um, is such an unbelievable opportunity for Garrett and his friends. Um, they're being exposed to so many things that they would never be exposed to otherwise or never have the opportunity to do. Roses are red, violets are black, live her once and never come back. Fucking disgusting. Check the perimeter again. Something we missed. We're on it, sir. This is no amateur we're dealing with. They've been killing for a long time. My name is Jordan, and I came a part of this uh, film. Um, Garrett and Brandon um, came to me and asked if I wanted to be a part of this. I knew Brandon from um, Pinkerton Academy, where I went, and I met um, Garrett through um, Brandon. I am um, diagnosed with high-functioning autism. Um, I uh, deal with hyperactiveness and uh, a little anxiety comes from that. I filmed a couple scenes, helped the, with um, some of the creativity. Can you, can you see people in the reflection in the windows too? Oh yeah, you can see reflection in the windows. Yeah. So we're gonna have to do this short, shorter one. Yeah. yeah. All right. Yeah. But it we was had a nice, lot it was of good yeah, yeah. yeah. I will be Mike. Uh, I'm the husband and the second victim of the killer. And what, what happens to both of you guys in the scene? I die. I get murdered. <laughs> I get knifed in the head from a distance. Any concerns or anything for your scene, guys, coming up? Any concerns? Um, I don't think there'll be any kissing, but other than that, no. <laughs> we need Jeremy! To stay warm, I'm gonna take a uh, trash bag around me. Uh, our makeup designer, uh, break this up for me. <laughs> Come on, pop, pop. I'm just trying to get more blanket. Yeah. Your hands okay. on the bone. I'm holding with my arm. I think that's good. My fork. Yeah. Oh, that, that's the thing though. He, he hands the dog the bone, so it's like. Yeah, so he, what I'm thinking, since we don't have a dog, he can just pretend, you know. The dog, the yeah, I mean, you could fade out, like, like you just like throw us the ball. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah just throw the ball. The dog? Since you don't have a dog there, so you're just gonna throw it. Throw the bone. Yeah. That way. That way. That way. This way. Yeah. Yeah. Torso. Okay. Oh. 
You want this? You can't reach it? There you go. <laughs> Brandon, what the fuck? Puppy? Yeah, pup, pup. Oh. Can't reach this? Well, there you go. Ever since watching movies, probably since probably my first film was five, six years old, I I always, I always told my parents, you know, I want to do that, but I just never know how, how to do it or any of that. You know, we camcorder and made YouTube videos, all that. Nick came up with a lot of different uh, ideas while we were filming. So uh, we tried a, lo a lot of different things. So they'll have options in the editing room. And it's always, always good to have options. This is where uh, Rose comes in and kills them both. Like good weird or bad weird? They're good weird, obviously. Wait, what was that? Oh, sounds like a dog. Can we go check it out? Check it out? That's how people die in horror movies. Nick, this is the first film I think he's directed, first time he's worked with actors. Yes, he's made videos of his own, but this, I think, is the first time he's had to direct 10, 12 actors. Um, to me, at some times, yes, I could see it was his first um, outing as a director, but other times it was just working with any other director in my career, as in, Nick, what do you think about this? Where would you like me to be? How would you like me to play the scene? Give me a word as that you would describe her emotional state right now. How I picture Rose, let's see, I picture her... She's gonna lick the blood off the night. I, 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 would, I would assume she had a pretty calm demeanor. Action! I thought you'd never get back. What the fuck? Cut. That broke, didn't it? Yeah, there's time to put that back. Ah, oh, jeez. There you go. It's okay. <sighs> Oh, we have another one too. Okay. Yeah, try not to like wet oh, it like that. <laughs> well, it has to look real, doesn't it? Well, you have to throw at least now. She doesn't have to yeah, throw it for to real throw. again. Well, well, I mean, you could use the the one part though, right? I think, to my opinion, it's gonna look a lot realistic because we have Maria in our movie, and um, it's gonna be a little scary. I saw a lot of. John through the scripts like it, it felt like you know these were some characters were probably like some of the characters he wrote were were very similar to people he knew. Apparently there's speculation that the character Rose in his film is loosely based on me and since my actual first name really is Rose that doesn't surprise me. He laughed when he found out that my first name was actually Rose. Um, but that would be a spoof that only John could pull off. And um, the joke was always in the house, you know, Linda's great and Linda's cool and everything else, but be afraid of her. I thought you'd never get back. It's a beautiful part of the country. To me, it's not as claustrophobic as, say, Pennsylvania, which is quite close by, um, relatively speaking. Um, I love the trees. I love the countryside. I love the fact that there are spaces between the houses that you don't see in Los Angeles where everything is like on top of everything else. Um, you can breathe in this country. Um, it is also really cold. There were times when we were shooting outside in like 40 degrees. To me, that is way out of my comfort level. I was like, I cannot hold this camera or zip up my jacket right now because my hands are frozen. Today, we are gonna be shooting the jogger scene. The jogger is brutally murdered by Rose. Action! This reminds me of Sleepaway Camp. The main character from Sleepaway Camp drags the body like either the dumpster or the woods. It just reminds me of that. Well, maybe going that way because then you won't have the stop sign and the, all that in the shot. It'll just be like a wooded area if we're filming me running like that way. Yeah. Like coming up this way. 
Um, I became involved with the film because um, I do like some small minor production makeup and stuff. Uh, when I found out that nobody came to their casting session, I was actually really disappointed. Um, honestly, was really disappointed. And uh, I'm not an actress. Um, so they asked me if I would play the part, and of course, I mean, how can I say no? I came all the way out here to do whatever I could do to make the film happen, so. All right, just a test run, and go. I've fallen, I, I can't get up. I left the life alert at home seat. Are you okay? <laughs> Cut. <laughs> Anybody, what is a life alert? Emergency button for like to have uh, people call. Okay. Like the like yeah. an ambulance or something. It's coming a little bit. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. There's lots, yeah. lots, lots, lots. Okay. That's We're gonna get a dolly shot for this next part. Um, I think that would look a lot better. Should I just be like this the whole time? No. Moving my chair like. Backwards or something like this. Yeah. Would that work? Yeah. Like. All right. Dude, no, not like that, Nick. Action. <laughs> we got feet, though. That's the only thing. Yeah. What would you say to John if he was here right now? That I love him and I, and I always will love him because he's my, it was like just a brother to me because not like my other stepbrothers that don't appreciate me and that he's a brother to me. And he, he taught me how to get out of my situations with my mom, my parents, my arguments, got, he got me out of my house that I miss him, that, that he would be so proud of me doing this movie for him. I'm sorry that I'm crying on film. Let it out, who cares? My mom said like this wasn't important to me before when I talked to you, when I talked to you. Um, she said like taking days out of work is not important in doing the movie. I listen to my own instinct. During the process of making this movie, um, we've had a lot of areas that were not handicapped accessible at all. Being in the woods, I fell out of my chair a lot. An atomic wedgie, ready? Yeah, do it. Yeah. <laughs> One, two, three. Sonic, boom! <laughs> Ten, really? <laughs> all right, ready? What? You're gonna carry that side, I'm gonna carry this side. You're, you're fucking high right now. <laughs> no, I'm not. You're shit. All right, straight up. I got it. Oh, shit. <laughs> I hate myself. Who are you? That's that car That's again. Ball. Who are these people? Do we know them? Hi. We All right, them. I got it. I got it. Bye. 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 What are you doing out here? Oh, nothing. Just taking a walk to clear my head. Cut myself on a branch. It's not safe out here, man. Let me give you a ride home. Thank you. Um, you can say just thank you, honey, and when you're yeah. buckling, don't go out. You, you, could just push, you, could, you could just push me out of the way. But then you lose your shot. I know. <laughs> Alright, we got like five minutes before the sun goes down. Okay. Action. Have a good night, Rose. Stay safe. Thank you, honey. We are filming at my grandparents' house. We're currently in the foyer. We picked this house because it's large and uh, there's a lot of lighting. Good lighting. <laughs> But um, yeah, you guys, you guys good to go? Mm -hmm. All right. This is Jacobs. Can you read us um, me another story? Well, call me Rose, Timmy. But I'm fresh out of books. We've read them all. 
Okay. Okay, I have one more story, and then you're off to bed, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, now it all started on one uh, warm October night. We were, thank goodness, in a house. Not only any house, a wonderfully big, incredibly, amazingly furnished house um, that belongs to Ted's grandparents. The guys pretty much were on top of things from the first moment of the shoot. Um, they knew where, um, where we were shooting, what rooms we were shooting in, what um, they wanted everything to look like. I was being going to Rose. It was okay. You made some money? Not tonight. Uh, that's too bad. Oh, I got some pizza if you want some. Actually, I don't have an appetite, darling, and I, I gotta go back out anyway. First time I met Garrett, um, I believe Ted was upstairs filming a different scene and I was downstairs with him. We were watching the Red Sox and uh, he had to go to the bathroom. I remember not knowing what his disability was or anything other than the fact that he was just in a wheelchair. And um, I, was, I was impressed with his determination to uh, get up all by himself. He didn't ask for his mother who was there for help. He didn't ask his grandparents. He didn't ask me or anything. He got out of his wheelchair and physically crawled to the bathroom on the floor, got up, did what he had to do and came back in. You know, my hat goes off to these kids, they're doing a great job. Uh, I'm really proud of them, I'm sure. Ted's proud of them, I'm sure. John's proud of them. It's like through the course of this film, they've learned something that it takes years to learn in just a couple weeks, which is impressive. Thank you for watching him on such short notice. Oh, no bother, you know I love to me. Making this project for Garrett, I think, means a lot to him. Um, I think he's always seen his older brother, you, just doing so much, and I think he really likes having his own thing to take on, help with his confidence, and I think that will really benefit him, him doing this film. Growing up, I had a brother, and I had three brothers and a sister, and we were always close growing up, always together. Once all, all of them moved out, I was just just really bored with life and just depressed for the longest time. And once I got to Living Innovations, I met my best friends. This will be probably the biggest thing I've ever done in my life. They said they wanted more blood for this shot. Pour a little bit in the palms of both my hands, please. Okay. It's one thing when you're just sitting, hanging around with people, and it's another when it actually comes time for them to have like organizational skills, put things into pre-thought, communicate with each other. There's been a lot of like struggles with that because it's just not comfortable for them. It's just not how their brain processes. Um, and I've seen them just over the course of the time, every single day that goes on, they become more organized. They're communicating with each other better. They're making lists of, of notes what they need to do for themselves. Like this has really fundamentally been helping them. They, they are learning and it's awesome to see them be able to succeed and conquer these new struggles. Um, this is where you're gonna find the dead body right over there. The ball, the ball's gonna go over there. And then Jack is going to find the uh, dead body over there. And sometimes I'll get it. Yep. Yep. And sometimes I won't. Yep. Yep. And when you, won't, and when you don't get it, it's, oh, man. Yeah, that's all you got to say. Yeah. And what, what do I say when I get it? Oh. Uh, I say nothing. Don't I? Oh, yeah. you can say yay. Yeah, we can say yay. Okay, that's all. Okay. That's, that's a good catch. Okay, that's good. Right. <laughs> Jamie, you know you want it. Hurry up! Yo, there's thorns all over this ground. Yeah. Dead body, you ready? Alright. Action. Alright. This one is coming to you, Timmy.
I definitely feel like I did a good job only because the like, anxiety's gone and I don't have to worry about like the stressful being in the program every day and going from four to this, doing the movie, being in program, teaching Zumba. I think since now we're almost we're done with the movie, I don't have to have that anxiety anymore. What's wrong? What's wrong? Is that good? Yeah, that's good. Great. I'd like to see the, our film go to some sort of um, uh, film festival of some sort in, in New Hampshire. Anywhere in New England, actually. Garrett couldn't wait to do this movie. Um, he, was, he loves his friend John and misses him terribly. And, and very proud of him and his friends putting this together. He's proud of himself. Um, and then all of a sudden he got sick and it put a, like breaks on everything, his whole social life, everything. He couldn't, we moved while he got sick in May. So not only did he get sick, but he came home to a house that he never lived in before, um, half an hour away from his social network. And he's been in bed basically the entire time. So towards the end of filming, he started to get sick a little bit. Um, this is on our first trip to New Hampshire. And we didn't think it was a big thing. You know, Garrett tends to get, you know, three times as sick as like the average person with a basic cold or a basic flu. But this time it was something serious. Um, and it was, you know, first it was a month, and then it was two months, and then it was six months. There's been times where it was really hard for me to keep shooting. I mean, he almost died, and my mom didn't want to make me scared across the country, so she would play it down as something, you know, not as bad as it was. I was terrified he was going to die. I was terrified every time I opened the stupid door to his room and waited for him to take a breath. It was horrendous. Things have been hard for me for the last few months. Um, back in May, I I got some sort of infection, bone infection, and um, I've been in the hospital for maybe seven times in the last five months. Um, it's been really hard on the whole family. Um, he gets up for short periods of time. Um, he goes to the doctor every Wednesday to the wound center. Um, other doctor's appointments, but basically that's all he gets up for. And when he gets home after going out, he runs a temp every time. It's just too much for him to go out. To keep me out of the hospital, we've been trying to keep me on heavy, heavy drugs. Um, one's called Vanco and one's called Gentomycin. And that seems to be helping me quite a bit. And in this whole process, I haven't been able to like, really help with our movie. Um, and that's been really getting me down. Garrett's always been very active and um, very involved in his day program until this year when he developed a complication of his spina bifida called a, an abscess in his left buttock. Because he can't feel um, from the waist down, he had no idea that there was an infection or any breakdown in his skin and developed an infection in the muscle over his left buttock. This then continued to expand and involve the bone underlying that muscle. Um, and until he became very sick with high fevers, it took a while to figure out that he had a problem other than a urinary tract infection, which he's had frequently. He's been through several surgeries to remove the infection, take out infection from the bone. So the documentary was almost done and I just decided that I needed to go see Garrett. So I decided to get on the plane and go surprise him in the hospital before his surgery. Hey, baby. Hello, you. Huh? Oh, that's weird. Stupid phone. It was just taking pictures of you. Know. God, I wish we had more visitors today, huh? Uncle Frank, you can't yeah. drive up. Why are you making a video too? Because everybody wants to see how you are. Hi. Hey, smile. Maybe a visitor would help. Oh shit.
<laughs> Hold it, we're waiting for him. <laughs> what do you think? That's awesome. <laughs> uh, I'm feeling very nervous before surgery. I'm supposed to be having surgery tomorrow to remove infection from my hip. The surgery that I'm having is to remove this this bacteria called osteomyelitis. Um, it has been in, uh, laying in my hip for the last six months now. Uh, being sick for so long, I just felt like I wanted to die. Um, but all in all, I just think I can do that. I can't. Um, for my mom's sake, my brothers, my whole entire family, my friends, this world wouldn't be the same without me. So now the premiere is a few days away, something that they've looked forward to ever since they made the movie last summer, which is very exciting to him. And, and now I don't even know if he can go. I mean, if he keeps running these temps this high, I won't let him go to to it because it'll just make him sicker. Magic 104, today's hits. This is Gino and the Magic Morning Show, and this morning I am joined in studio by two young filmmakers. They're actually doing an independent project out of southern New Hampshire, and it's in honor of a good friend of theirs. They actually made a horror movie, right guys? Yes. yes. Here at Magic 104, we're always looking for uh, an organization or something that's independent for a great cause, something that's working for a great cause. And uh, when I read about the project, I just had to have these guys on and talk about them. Tonight is the big premiere of the film. So everybody will be able to go see it. It's going to happen in southern New Hampshire at a Chunky Cinema Pub in Nashua. And uh, it's going to be a great a great thing. You guys must be so excited for it. Oh, yeah. We're pumped. All kinds of special guests from family and friends, of course. I knew right away that these guys are great friends of John Hernandez. There's no question about that. And uh, I think they really feel like they're pushing on his legacy. Well, one of the things that I've learned that I didn't know before interviewing the guys was that they each one of them had their own disability that they are living with to make the people hear that or see the film that John wanted to make, I think they're holding that to great honor and I think that's pretty cool. Hello and welcome. Thank you for watching Dairy Community Television. I am your host, Kate Janess, and joining me today is a local filmmaker who directed a short horror film called Rose Thorn. Nick Saparito is joining me in studio today to discuss what went into creating the eight minute film. Nick, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me. So tell us about Rose Thorn. Uh, Rose Thorn is a short horror film um, that I directed, um, co-wrote, and was the director of photography on about a, about a serial killer named Rose who is telling stories to a little kid. And, uh, and you know, it's like to him, is it fantasy or is it reality? And then she's being tr traced by, um, let's, sorry, chased by two um, a detective and a police officer, and it's the whole cat and mouse of it. Who else was involved in making this film? Uh, a couple of friends of mine, uh, Garrett Payson, Brandon Joyle, and Jordan Burton, who are also um, friends of our, our friend John as well. Who, and John's the writer. John yeah. is the writer of um, Rose Thorn, you know, and before and after his passing, I helped um, write the rest of the script for him. So in conjunction with this film, you were also filming our friend John. Yes. Tell me about that. Our friend John is a um, documentary on the filming of Rose Thorne and um, like what, what went into it, people that inspired him, people that knew him. The, the thing I'm kind of concerned about is people will see it as our film rather than John's film, which I hope people will know that this is, that this was John's film and that, you know, without him, that, you know, his vision probably never would have happened without him. I think 102 people are gonna be there. I'm 
Saw, when I heard that Rose Thorne was going to be at Chunky's, I was just like, wow, we made it to the big times right here. And, you know, I mean, this is great, you know. I mean, this, I mean, yeah, the direct, it's great to be the director and everything, but it's just fantastic, you know. I, I look back at all the cast and crew as well that did this piece, and, you know, I have to thank each and every one of them because this thing would, really wouldn't be anything without them. All right, guys, without further ado, we are going to show Rose Thorne. So if you guys could take your seats. Another house and lived happily ever after. The end. Mrs. Jacobs, can you read me another story? Well, call me Rose, Timmy. But I'm fresh out of books. We read them all. <sighs> okay. Okay. Okay, I have one more story. Just one, and then you gotta go to bed, right? <laughs> hmm, let's see, it all started on one warm October night. St. James. It's still weird to call you my husband, though. Is that a good weird? Or a bad weird? A good weird, obviously. <laughs> You'd never get back. What the fuck? Did you really care about people, Miss Jake? 
wake up, I mean Rose? No, Timmy. This is just a story for little boys and girls. Roses are red, violets are black, liver once and never come back. Fucking disgusting. Check the perimeter again. Something we missed. We're on it, sir. This is no amateur we're dealing with. They've been killing for a long time. Taking a walk to cool my head. Cut myself on a branch. Well, it's not safe out here, ma'am. Let me drive you home. Thank you. Have a good night, Rose. Stay safe. Thank you, honey. You too. Fucking wife! You can't find me, but I found you. Oh, to me it looks like your mommy and daddy are here. Oh, we'll see. Mm, be quiet. I have no complaints. Thank you for watching him on such short notice. No bother at all. You know I love Timmy. Oh, unnecessary. Really? He's like my Saturday night entertainment. Are you sure? He can be pretty romantic. Really, it's okay. Well, good night. Good night. Good night. Thank you.
I was really impressed with how well they did and how um, with everything Garrett goes through, all the surgeries and everything that he's been through, that he was able to stand tall and really produce something great. They spent a lot of time crafting it and I know a lot of people when they go in their first film, uh, especially with their short films, uh, they'll just try to whip out a film just to say, hey I made a film. But well, these guys took it seriously. The disability didn't even, I, it never entered my head. All that entered my head was that I'm, I'm walking into a first film project and I know how my first film turned out. I know how the first film that I ever acted in turned out. And I know how a lot of people's first films turn out. So I, I wasn't expecting, you know, Kubrick or anything like that. But I was, I was equally as impressed as these guys' first films as, as many others that I've seen. And it was better than many films, even in a lot of ways, better than mine. I couldn't have been more proud of them. They did way more than I ever thought they could, and I think they did way more than they ever thought they could. And they made a film that they should definitely be proud of. Anybody can overcome anything. Um, you know, it, don't ever think that, you know, you can't do something because you know, something's wrong with you, as long as your heart is there, as long as your heart's there, then you can do anything that you want. Your disability does not define you. You are not defined by your disability or the things that you don't have. You're defined by what you do, what you want, and basically, I mean, you can achieve anything. Like, sky's the limit. It's limitless opportunities, as long as it's what you really want, and you work for it. I mean, they were so involved, and they really want to go on to do other things like this, like, you know, uh, Brandon was talking about Rose Thorne too. <laughs> um, he posts all the time, you know, oh, we're going to get all the girls now, we're producers. And, um, so it, it, it's really changed how they look at themselves. I mean, it's a big accomplishment. I am so pumped. I, am, I don't know what else to say, but I'm, I'm going to say that I feel like I'm going to be a big, like on the right carpet, like I'm going to be like a movie star. Seeing the film for the first time was um, awesome. Um, it's my first film. Uh, just seeing it was amazing. Even doing this was extremely fun, even being sick. I'd say to people that have disabilities, go out and do whatever the hell you want. Who cares? I would say to other kids who um, have disabilities, follow your dreams because you can't do any. Nobody, no, nobody say that you can't do anything. Everybody has a diagnosis. There's something we're all not good at doing, but deep down there's something we're great at fucking doing great. And you know, we just need to find that. You know, don't let, don't let anyone tell you you can't do something. You know, just keep looking for that dream. Chase that dream and once you get it, you know, tell those motherfuckers you got it right. Don't you take
funky bronco that might need to be tamed a little bit um, but that was who John was it, 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 he didn't get he didn't tame <laughs> he didn't tame and you know sometimes uh, I would I would I say you know are you sure you really think you should be doing that you know is that safe um, and sometimes John's answer would be well I need to try and I need to do as many things I can with the time that I have <laughs> 